Live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back. We're here at Moscone North for VMworld 2019, 10th year of the Cube covering VMworld. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host is John Troyer, and welcome to the program. Uh, two guests from Dell Technologies. Sitting to my right is Chandamai Mandal, who's the Director of Storage Solutions, and sitting to his right is David Nguyen, who's Senior Director of Server Product Planning and Management, also with Dell. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks Happy for having to be us, here. Guys. All right, so we've got server and storage. I'm going to talk about something that we've been talking about for a while uh, on the server side, it's been delivered for a bit, and on the storage side is now rolling out. So everybody's favorite topic, uh, non-volatile memory express, or NVMe as it rolls off the tongue, storage class memory, or SCM, and lots of other things uh, you know, down that are really helping, uh, you know, a big transformational wave uh, that you know, we, it really you know, changes how our applications interact uh, with the infrastructure. Uh, Chandamai, you know, get, bring us up to date on the latest. Uh, sure, and let's start where you ended. We are seeing explosion of applications, right? And in fact, in morning's uh, keynote, Pat Gelsinger had a statistics. There are 352 million enterprise applications today, and it will be 792 million in three years. Now as the applications are growing exponentially, we cannot keep growing the infrastructure at that rate. So NVMe is the, the way we can consolidate a lot of the infrastructure. If we can think about end-to-end -end NVMe, starting from uh, the server, NVMe over fabric, to the storage array, down to the back end with NVMe uh, SSDs, this actually can put together a great uh, platform uh, where you can consolidate a lot of the applications uh, and delivering the high performance, low latency that we'll need while meeting various service level objectives. So we can go over a little bit of the details, but I think it all starts from like NVMe uh, over fabric, coming from the server to the storage array. So probably like that's the first step we need to consider. Yeah, uh, David, you know, I, I love this discussion when we get to talk at the application layer right. because, you know, Flash changed the market a lot. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, much better energy and it's much faster or anything, uh, but, you know, this inflection point that we're talking about for application modernization, you know, NVMe is one of those enablers there and something I know your team's been working on for a while. Yeah, actually on the PowerEdge side, we've been, you know, we've been embracing the benefits of NVMe for quite some, so many years now, right? We started out by introducing NVMe in our 12th generation servers, you know, front-loaded, hot serviceable drives, and then of course we branch out from there. Uh, and then today, you know, uh, a lot of uh, the, the servers from the PowerEdge family all support NVMe devices. So uh, the benefit there is really you give the customer choices in terms of what kind of storage, what kind of uh, tiering they want it, you know, for the application's needs, right? Now, one of the things that's great about uh, you know, NVMe over Fabric is it's, it's more than just the flash storage itself, right? It's about enabling uh, the standards you know, across the host, you know, across the data fabric down to the storage, uh, really to deliver it on the overall performance that you know, the application needs. And by you know, uh, improving IOPS and lower latency overall, from a server perspective, this just means that we're uh, releasing more CPU cycles back into the application so that it can run different types of workloads. And for us, this is a, this is a great story from PowerEdge as well as from uh, PowerMax, you know, coming together to enable this uh, NVMe over fabric. Mm. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of slow about some of these things, but if you kind of squint at the history, yep. and uh, you know, we went from uh, our, you know, the, the PC revolution, and then we had, uh, you know, we had SANs and arrays, right? And then we had, we had centralized storage, shared storage. Last couple of years, a lot of interest, and still, right, hyper-converged, and you had, a, you had a lot of pizza boxes with the storage right there. It's, I mean, I now think, right, am I, and I'm, I'm following the thread, I think, which is now that we're, we're, we now can have a, a rack with, a, again, a fabric, and, a, and, a, and again, now we can, we can focus on our NVMe storage, over, our NVMe over fabric-driven solid-state storage 
somewhere below my servers uh, that are that are doing handling compute somewhere else. Is that that the future we're headed towards now? Yes, I mean everything <laughs> has uh, its uh, place, but to give you the perspective, right? Uh, it's not just uh, I mean coming down to the storage array, but how this is enabling the future storage as well. And the storage class memory is the perfect example. And as David said, let's take PowerMax as an example, right? Uh, so in PowerMax, you can, it, it is like end-to-end -end NVMe ready, like you get NVMe over fabric at the front end, but then uh, we have NVMe SSDs in the back end. The thing is, now it is also, the NVMe uh, is enabling technologies like storage class memory, which is bringing in like very high performance, very less latencies. Latency is going down in the order of like tens of microseconds. Now, this is as close as you can get to the like DRAM with persistent storage. However, you need a balance. This is like order of magnitude uh, costlier. Now, look at PowerMax, what we are doing in terms of first, it's uh, NVMe done right. What do I mean by that? You have like multi-controller architecture that can actually do this level of parallel processing and uh, concurrency. And then we have both like SCM, or storage class memory, and NVMe SSDs. And we are doing intelligent tiering based on the built-in machine learning engine uh, that we have. And it is looking at 40 million data sets real time to decide like which set of workloads should go on these SCM drives, which should go on uh, NVMe SSDs. And on top of it, you add quality of service. So this platform gives you uh, service level objectives. You can choose from uh, diamond, platinum, gold, silver, bronze, and you can consolidate a lot of those 352 million different types of applications on this array, guaranteeing you are going to meet all of your SLS, no matter what type of applications you are consolidating to. Okay, uh, I'm wondering if you could both, you know, bring us into what this means for VMware customers and break it into two pieces. One is kind of a traditional virtualized shop, yep. and secondly, you know, spent a lot of time in the keynote this morning talking about the cloud native containerized, you know, uh, type of environments. Will there be any difference uh, for, from, from both of your worlds? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because, uh, you know, from, from our perspective, right, what we've seen with the enablement of MME in our platforms, you know, John, you brought up a very interesting point, right? It seems like, you know, the past couple of years we went from moving storage onto the host and now with NVMe over Fabric, we're actually uh, taking the storage away from the host again, right? And that's exactly true because you know, the first, the first statement you, uh, you brought up, Steve, was about how Flash enabled different applications to run better on the host. Well, we see that still, right? And so with NVMe, you know, uh, we see the lower uh, response time enabling uh, our customers to, to, to run more jobs or more VMs per server. That's one aspect of it. Uh, you know, we, we've seen this benefit. A lot of our platforms today are using various different applications and, and solutions. You know, you talk about VxRail, that's a, a vSAN story for Dell. You talk about vSAN ready notes for customers who want to build it themselves, right? Our platforms enable with NVMe backplane, NVMe storage, allows them to use NVMe or SAS or SATA, whatever they want, but the point is here is that if, when they're using NVMe uh, Flash, for instance, uh, and I'll talk about a little bit about uh, the PowerEdge MX with its all flash uh, MVE backplane. In a case, in a study that we did with vSAN application uh, running an OLTP type of workload, we saw the response time with MVME over traditional SAS, uh, you know, from our competitor, improve by 56%, right? Which means that from that same particular uh, solution build out, we were able to add 44% more VMs on the platform. Now, at the same time, we increased the overall orders per minute by roughly over 600,000 OPMs for that type of uh, uh, benchmark over our nearest competitor. So that right there is the benefit that we see from a virtualized, from a VMware perspective. And I'll add from the storage perspective in two ways. Uh, in fact, in last VMworld in EMEA, we demonstrated end-to-end -end, uh, NVMe over Fabric uh, with special build of vSphere supporting uh, NVMe uh, over Fabric and storage class memory with NVMe drives. 
what it gives a, a regular like vSphere based environment is that you have the ability to move your VMs around like the applications where the highest performance and latency is critical, it will be on those special service levels and special uh, like data stores. In fact, the demonstration was like SCM data store and NVMe uh, SSD data stores. So in the same fabric with, uh, uh, in PowerMax, you can move things around whether it's like regular uh, fiber channel or uh, SCM. And then the other part I want to add, in the morning like we saw the announcement that now Kubernetes is built in or will be built in with the ESXi platform, right? And ESXi is bread and butter of all the storage customers uh, that we have. Now with, like when you consider those, uh, those things built in on the vSphere platform, uh, think about like how many applications, how many virtualized workloads you can run, whether it's on-premise or VMware Cloud on AWS, uh, all of those consolidation, uh, uh, as well as like the performance needs while reducing your footprint, that's the benefit uh, the VMware uh, shops, or the VMware admins are going to see from the storage side. I, and again, I'm, I'm not following the parts, but what kind of, I mean, we're not talking about a couple of megabytes here anymore, right? No. What, are, what size of parts are shipping these days? How much? So, so from our perspective, um, up to seven, seven gigabyte, uh, actually, I'm sorry, seven terabyte drives are available in the market today for NVMe. Yeah. Now, whether customers buy those drives, you know, it, it depends on the economic factor, sure. but yeah, it's, it's something that's, in, that's available from Dell today. So, and I'll add to what David uh, said. So for uh, SCM drives, uh, 750 gig to 1.5 uh, terabyte uh, SCM drives, uh, dual ported uh, opt-in drives that will be available in the uh, PowerMax, uh, as well as uh, 15 terabyte NVMe SSDs. So this is the capacity we are talking about. And again, the latencies at the application level, like from the storage, like you are going to see like less than 300 microseconds. That's the power we are bringing in with this technology uh, to the market. Great, uh, give us a little look forward. We talked about, you know, NVMe has been shipping for a bit on the servers, now it's really rolling out on, on the storage side. Saw there's a lot of startups in the space, you know, one recent acquisition got, got some people talking. What, what should we be looking for uh, from both of you over kind of the next six to 12 months? So over next to, uh, uh, next six to 12 months, you will see a lot of innovation in this space uh, from the storage side where uh, the order of magnitude, I mean, the one single array, uh, I mean, today it supports, say, like 10 million IOPS, less than 500 microsecond latency. Uh, I cannot give you the exact uh, details, but within like a short time, these numbers are going to go up by like more than like 50%, like latency is going to get uh, reduced, the, uh, the throughput we'll be driving will actually like more than double. Uh, so you'll see like a lot of these innovations and kind of like uh, evolution in terms of the drive capacities, both from the uh, SCM drive perspective, NVMe, uh, SSDs, those will continue to expand, leading to faster performance, better consolidation uh, for all the workloads. Yeah, from our perspective, I mean, you know, the data growth is going to continue. We all know that. And for us, it's like designing systems based on what the customers need, what the applications needs, right? And hence, that's why we have different types of storage that's available today. So for us, you know, while we're doing a lot of things from a direct attached storage perspective, customers continue to have a need for shared storage. MME over fabric just provides a better uh, you know, end-to-end -end story for us, really, from a Power Edge and Power Max perspective. But in the future, you ask what we're going to do, well, we see the need to probably decouple storage class memory from the host again. And really, what's preventing us from doing it today is really having the right fabric in place to be able to deliver to that performance level that the applications needs. MME with fabrics, fiber channel, ethernet, iSCSI, or I'm sorry, infinite band, whatever. These are some of the things that you know, we're looking forward to in the future to make that, uh, that leap. 
All right. Well, it's really been great to see uh, to the technology that I know the people that build your products have been excited about for many years, but rolling out into you know real world deployments for customers that yep. will transform uh, what they're doing. So uh, for John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. Back with lots more coverage here from VMworld 2019. Thanks for watching the Cube. Thank <laughs> you.